beginner makeup tips that will make it look like you know what you're doing even if you don't. These are all tips I wish I had and knew earlier. Step one, start with something that's really gonna help perfect your skin. The Dibs Perfector is my favorite. This one is in number two. You need less foundation than you think. I see a lot of people do that I feel like it ends up being unnecessary and makes your makeup look a little cakey is overdoing the foundation. I just do honestly a little bit. Even if you're breaking out, cover them like spot conceal them with concealer don't just do more of a mask of foundation use a brush to blend your foundation in instead of a sponge i've been doing this recently and i feel like you just waste so much less product the foundation i used was house labs and then my brush is the viral dibs brush make sure you always 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 take it down the jaw on the neck and into the ears. This is how you're gonna make sure you don't get those demarcation lines. When it comes to concealer, more is not always more. I have really dark under eye circles, so sometimes I'll correct, but I like to make sure that I'm putting the concealer in very specific places. I probably do more because I do have really dark under eyes. If you don't, you can do even less. And I pull it up here. So I focus more on where I actually get the darkness, which is right here in the inner, and then I like to do the outside to really lift. Anywhere I'm breaking out, I'm just gonna spot conceal instead of doing more foundation again. It'll get more cakey that way. For my under eyes, I do like to use a sponge just because I feel like it melts everything in. I'm gonna let this stay here a little bit over the pimples, that way it gets more coverage. Take your beauty blender and just press it into the skin. If it picks up a little bit of the product in the under eye, that's totally okay because you don't want too much under here. It will settle into fine lines if you have them, and I definitely do. With no more product but the same sponge, I like to go down around my nose, on my chin, and I close my eyes and almost do this as like an eyeshadow base. Once this has been sitting for a little bit, I like to just take the warmth of my finger, press and melt it in. When it comes to powder, I like to take a powder puff like this. I load it up and then I'm going to press it into the skin and up. I like to pick something with a slightly pinker undertone. I feel like a lot of under eye products are way too yellow, way too warm for me personally. And then I'm gonna go right on top of where I have those breakouts. Sometimes I bronze first and sometimes I set first, just kind of depends. This, I really wanted to get a flawless under eye before anything creased. If bronzing and contouring scares you a little bit, I have two tips for you. One, pick a product that's super blendable and easy to use. The Dibs Desert Island Duo is my favorite. Then shade 5.5. And the second tip, instead of drawing it on, which is fun and I do like to do, take a brush, the dense side of the brush, Brush and pick up the product directly onto the brush and then start stippling it onto your face and blending it in. This will give you a much softer, more blown out look. And again, your makeup will never look overdone. Look how glowy that is. And then you can do the same thing. I like to create almost like a three shape here on the forehead. I have a bigger forehead, so I'm gonna bring the product down a little bit. If you have a smaller forehead, don't do that. Whatever's left, blend out and down. Look how easily that blends out. And then I actually do like to draw it on on my nose. I feel like I get the best contour that way. The tip and then under. And then just gently blend it in. Try to make sure the product stays right where I want it to stay here. Amazing thing about this stick is one side's the bronzer and one side's the blush. It's already paired together for you and all the combos are really pretty, which makes it easy. Again, I'm just gonna pick the blush straight up. This color is gorgeous for fall. It's like a mauve rosy tone. I'm just gonna press that on. My next tip, instead of setting your bronzer and your blush with powder, set your bronzer with powder bronzer and your blush with powder blush. I'm gonna take this bronzer topper, tap into it, tap it off, and I'm gonna use the longer, like fluffy side of the brush to just dust over everywhere where I bronzed lightly. By setting tone on tone, you're not taking away any of the color, actually just sort of like amplifying everything, but setting it at the same time. This one is in Spice to Chai. These Dibs toppers also have a really nice glow to them. They have like a rolling glow when you turn your cheek. That way you're not mattifying the pretty glow. You just have like the center of your face matte. And then this one is in Spice Gal. My favorite to pair 5.5 with because this side is actually very similar. You cannot like overdo these toppers. That's what's so nice. Again, if you're intimidated by blush, you can't overdo these. And I like to go kind of right up under. I'll hit the very tip of my nose too. When it comes to eyeshadow, I actually just find that using your bronzer is the most flattering look, very universal. Whatever color you use to bronze or contour, just take that all in the crease of your eye, fluff it out, you can even put it on your lid. This is just gonna give you like a really cohesive, effortless look. With eyeliner, it's all about placement. For me personally, I wanna elongate and do like an almond shape and lift everything. This one is the Makeup by Mario in the plum shade. Has like this little brush situation on one side and then eyeliner on the other. I like to start at the edge. I get it right up on my lash line. Lay the pencil sideways. I only personally go about half of my eye, almost like where the pupil is. 
And then the best way to find your perfect shape wing is by starting where your lower lash line is and following that line up. This will help ensure that you get the perfect wing shape for your eye. I find this just lifts everything, which at 37, we love. You can either leave it or smudge it. I'm kind of a smudge girl myself. I'm gonna give you guys some major lip liner tips. This is Dib's number three liner. This stays unlike any other liner I've ever tried. Overline a little bit, but only the very center. So the bottom here, then follow the natural line of the lip up the side. Obviously I have lip fillers, it's not natural, but you know what I'm saying. And then overline only here. When it comes to the top, you're gonna connect the cupid's bow. This is gonna give you such a lift. I actually haven't gotten filler in the longest time. And there's like not very much left, but I feel like it looks like it because of this trick. Ready? Find your cupid's bow. Connect it. I just rock it back and forth like that. And then follow the line down. See how that adds volume, but honestly it adds shape. Like it just sculpts and lifts and gives you a pout. Shade three from Dibs is a favorite. And then the other ones I always use are these Ilia like chunky crayons, hydrating lip sketch crayons. Those are nice too, but I more so fill in with these, like the edges. Adding a highlight has become one of my favorite freaking steps. These are limited edition. Let's dropped it. Stunning. I've been taking a little fluffy eyeshadow brush. Look at that. And just hitting there and then blending it out sideways like that into the under the brow area, this creates like a really pretty halo. A little down the bridge of the nose and the very tip. I mean, look at the glow and again, under the brow. Lashes, this is the Tarte Lash Curler. It's probably my favorite one right now. I squeeze it a couple times. Switch up my mascaras, but the primer, the key here is to start at the root, wiggle it up. I do probably like two coats of this, honestly, and then I let it sit for like a minute before you apply mascara. Same with mascara, start at the root and wiggle it up. Beginner makeup tips that will make it look like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. You're about to. 